Thank you. So, good afternoon, uh, everyone. So uh, we are going to begin this session with our next speaker, who is uh, Professor Giancarlo Portino, as is an IEEE fellow. He's a full professor of computer engineering at the Department of Informatics, Modeling, Electronics and Systems of the University of Calabria in Italy. And he received his PhD in computer engineering for UNICAL in 2000. He's also a distinguished pro uh, professor at Wuhan University of Technology and Wanzhong Agricultural University in China, Hayden Spert and Haas China Senior Research Fellow at the Italian ICAR CNR Institute. And at UNICAL, he's uh, the Director's Delegate to uh, International Relationship. And we are happy to have him because he is a, a distinguished lecturer from IEEE Census Council. And he's going to give us a talk uh, about community-oriented uh, wearable computing systems, a paradigm shift to monitor and control cooperative groups of people. So, Giancarlo. Uh, OK, is... so th th thank you. Thanks a lot for your introduction. Very nice introduction. So I'm pretty happy to be here, you know, to give this uh, distinguished uh, talk in um, your workshop. OK, so. Uh, uh, today, you know, the focus will be on wearable computing systems, specifically uh, those, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, oriented to communities. So uh, I will try to transmit this, uh, let's say, new concept of community-oriented wearable computing systems. And of course, everything will be based on uh, wearables. Uh, we, we, we call collectives of wearables. And... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the current outcome um, of this talk is based on uh, a national project that we are carrying out here in, um, in Italy, but also with some international um, relations. Okay, so this is the outline. First of all, I'd like to introduce our spine body of knowledge uh, on which um, we have been working for uh, many years, almost 15 years so far, um, and based on this body of knowledge, um, we uh, developed methodologies, uh, algorithms, but even real prototypes based on uh, body sensor networks. And at the end of my talk, I will try to discuss a little bit about this new concept of community-oriented wearable computing systems. Then I will try to uh, delineate, uh, you know, directions of uh, uh, future work. Okay, first of all, you know that, you know, the market of wearables is increasing day by day, I'd like to say. So, for example, also due to, you know, the, the pandemics uh, we had, uh, you know, the, the market uh, uh, next year will be very likely worthy of more than uh, a significant Num a significant amount of uh, US dollars, more than 100 billions in 2024. So uh, wearables are a reality, and uh, um, we, we, have, we have to use them in order uh, not just to create, uh, uh, let's say, commercial systems, because, uh, you know, we are not, uh, uh, let's say, mainly uh, focused on the creation of commercial systems, but we are mainly focused on uh, the uh, creation of basic research, and we use uh, wearables as a platform, okay, on which, at top of which, we uh, we will build, let's say, our our algorithms and research uh, prototypes. But first of all, uh, wearable computing systems right now are uh, based on a three-tier architecture infrastructure that is a usual uh, device edge cloud infrastructure based on uh, body sensor networks and wearable devices at, at the at the device layer okay even at the um, micro edge level so you can see here um, a person uh, with uh, different uh, wearable gadgets uh, in order to detect different uh, um, signals not, not just physiological signals but different signals that could be Again, physiological or could be inertial or visual audio signals and so on and so forth. 
Of course, uh, you also got devices uh, very close to the person, like smartphones, for example. They could be a kind of gateway interfacing the, the micro edge layer with uh, the edge of fog uh, layer, okay? That is a, uh, in the middle layer uh, between uh, body sensor networks and wearable devices and cloud systems. Of course, you need cloud systems when you need to, um, you need to execute uh, uh, algorithms, and then you need more uh, computational power. Uh, with that, you, you could have in your devices or you could have in the edge or macro edge uh, layer. Uh, you know, many different signals, uh, as, as I told you, uh, physiological signals that could be um, EG, EMG, uh, blood glucose, uh, uh, cardiorespiratory parameters and so on and so forth, but also many others like accelero acceleration, uh, gyros, uh, magnetometer values, and so on and so forth. So we are able to collect many different values, heterogeneous values from uh, um, the sensors uh, we, we, we got on, uh, on our body or even inside our body, even though our research is mainly oriented to uh, wearable uh, sensors than on implantable sensors. In different domains, you can see many different domains, not just healthcare, but also wellness, fitness, sport, emergency response scenarios, and military uh, domain, uh, manufacturing, logistics, uh, in all uh, those domains in which you know humans could, uh, could work and then could be monitored in order to um, control them in order to prevent uh, uh, accidents uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so humans are uh, in, in, in the middle of this uh, um, new concept that is uh, named community oriented wearable computing systems. And uh, in our past research, uh, we developed this so called spine body of knowledge in the last 15 years mainly uh, based on body sensor networks in different domains, the same I, I mentioned a minute ago. The project was uh, launched by my university, by Telecom Italia Pirelli Lab in, in Berkeley, in California. Uh, it was supported by UCB, University of Berkeley, specifically the group led by San Giovanni Vincentelli, and also other actors from California, like Intel from Santa Clara. Here, the idea was, again, to create the very first uh, uh, domain-specific framework for programming body sensor networks. So at the end of the day, we also created a community, and we delivered an open source platform uh, on the basis of which you know, people uh, could be able to, to develop body sensor network systems and, and application. Uh, in, uh, in the last 15 years, we also provided many different variants uh, with respect to the, the basic uh, framework named Spine, uh, different variants like Spine 2, C-Spine, A-Spine, Spine Star, in, involving different concepts like multi-agent systems, like collaboration, uh, or like auto, auto autonomic systems. Okay, but uh, again, uh, the main concept was to, to support the development of body sensor network application. The project that is indeed is still a, an open source project uh, produced many papers, a lot of papers in top level journals, uh, also received many citations, uh, also several highly cited paper um, with, uh, you know, with, with the uh, outcomes uh, of the SPINE project. Specifically, uh, the reference SPINE paper, you see the very first one you see on this slide, uh, that you know was, uh, let's say, a milestone of our project. Uh, and uh, um, if you, you are invited, strongly invited, you know, to read it, because uh, you know, it provides the, very, the, the fundamentals of the SPINE framework with also some uh, applications and the, and the methodology you know, to drive the development of such uh, BSN systems. We also got a book that was uh, published by IEEE Press Wiley. And uh, uh, also, you know, I'm distinguished lecturer just because, you know, uh, SPINE, uh, the, the outcomes of SPINE allowed me, you know, 
to produce uh, uh, so much and then uh, you know I'm here to try to to give you you know this uh, uh, spine uh, body of knowledge message okay but uh, let's try now to understand a little bit better what uh, what is a, a body central network system and uh, um, what will be uh, uh, a next generation body central network system so this is the the main focus of my of my talk today, you know, uh, what a body sensor network is a uh, uh, wireless sensor network applied to the human body. Usually it is composed by a set of sensors, uh, wearable sensors that you can uh, put on your, on your body and uh, they are orchestrated or coordinated by a coordinator that usually um, is a smartphone or even a laptop or anyway, an environmental um let's say pc pre pretty close to uh, to the persons uh, or to the person to be monitored many different applications i told you from healthcare to uh, interactive gaming also social interactions and you know this is uh, a pictorial um, uh, snapshot of a body sensor network system and uh, you can see that uh, you could uh, exploit commercial uh, sensors. Uh, you could build uh, your own sensors. Sometimes uh, we built our own sensors by scratch. Uh, sometimes we reused commercial sensors like uh, the ones you can see on the bottom of this slide. Telos B from Crossbow, uh, Java Sunspot from Oracle, uh, Shimmer from uh, Shimmer Company in Ireland, or many other uh, you know, um, micro micro sensor platforms. Okay, so uh, again, uh, the the advantage you know to 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 exploit commercial sensors is that they are already available, well tested, and then you you can uh, you can uh, reuse them. But of course, uh, uh, body sensor networks could be used first of all to create activity monitoring for humans. Human activity recognition is one of the most important area of research. In the context of body sensor networks so by using sensor networks on your body uh, we are able to detect uh, different postures or different activities if you are standing still if you are walking if you are running if you are bicycling and so on and so forth okay many different postures and and activities we already are uh, you know are able to deliver 100% uh, accurate uh, fault detectors based on body sensor networks. So uh, the next step is not just the fault detection, because again, uh, we got systems that are already 100% accurate in detecting faults, but specifically to to predict faults. That is, uh, you know, much more difficult than uh, to detect fall and faults. And of course, this uh, this could be done using uh, body sensor networks. And, uh, you know, our, our framework, the framework we, we delivered, uh, you know, in our project uh, is able to support uh, effective and efficient programming of body sensor networks. So using uh, constrained hardware resources, if you think about Telos B, got a very uh, constrained resources um, in terms of CPU, in terms of memory, in terms of bandwidth, in terms of energy. OK, uh, then you have to fulfill quasi real time requirements. And in order to do so, you need to have even uh, robust abstraction, effective abstraction in order to to deal with the quasi real time requirements. And uh, of course, you also have to um, uh, execute signal processing uh, algorithms, not just at the base station side, not just onto the cloud, but specifically inside the sensors, okay, inside the sensors. And this was the main focus of Spine, to create this environment in which we could be able to inject uh, algorithms, even machine learning algorithms inside uh, these uh, tiny sensor nodes to be executed locally at the edge, as we say now, at the edge, and not uh, on the smartphone, on, onto the cloud. Uh, of course, uh, you know this is uh, uh, this comes from uh, an in-depth analysis we performed in the last years. So there there are three main approaches uh, in developing body sensor network, and we are in uh, in the in the third one that is domain-specific framework. So Spine is a domain-specific framework, 
And uh, the idea of the domain specific framework is that, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, a general purpose approach. And from one side, it is able to have the same characteristics as application specific approaches. On the other side, is able to, um, to include important abstraction, so many characteristics deriving from general purpose middlewares. So this is a summarizing uh, slide about Spine. So if you would like to have more information about Spine, you can follow the, the link, spine.days.unical.it. And you know the, the, the architecture of Spine, uh, Spine is a middleware. So the architecture of Spine is the one you can see in the slide. Uh, you got a Spine API at different level, at, at the low level, uh, different APIs in different low-level languages, but also different APIs in different high-level languages, like, uh, for example, Android, or like Java, or like uh, C, for example, okay? And uh, um, it's important to say that uh, the domain-specific framework allows to provide all the functionalities you need in order to discover services provided by body sensor networks to flexibly setting up, you know, all the functions uh, that the body sensor network is able to provide. It is able to support uh, raw data transmission and uh, in node signal processing. This is very important to be able to inject uh, algorithms, uh, tiny algorithms inside the sensors, but also at the coordinator uh, side to be able to process even uh, high level data uh, also uh, with the support of uh, a very powerful tool like Wicca, Naim or other machine learning and data mining tools. So uh, again, Spine was uh, uh, applied in many different domains. As you see, you know, the, the home domain, smart home, smart uh, hospital, smart office, uh, or also in mobility. So practicing sport in different sport, uh, not just, uh, you know, running, but also tennis. We experimented, you know, the spine framework uh, with uh, the, the tennis sport because I'm a tennis player. This is why, you know, we, we focus on tennis. And, uh, and another important step was to create the body cloud that was able to to monitor not just one individual, but a, a community of individuals using a cloud-based approach and using, uh, you know, a, a framework and infrastructure that was extensible enough in order to create multiple different applications atop body cloud uh, infrastructure. Um, okay, uh, so far, you know, the, the main focus in body sensor network was uh, to... Um, uh, again, uh, to consider a single individual in uh, even in uh, human activity recognition, okay? Just a single activities or single postures of single individuals. Now, you know, the current research trend is about considering uh, multi-user activity recognition, okay? So using, again, wearable sensors in order to detect multiple uh, human activity recognition. So in which, you know, multiple users could interact with each other. And, you know, the system is able to understand what's going on. For example, an handshake shake between two people or a discussion between two people or a walking uh, among different people. Okay, so this is a, um, a, a pretty hot topic right now because again, uh, human activity recognition for single individuals is not anymore um, a hot topic because we could be able to reach a very high level of accuracy in a single human activity recognition. But of course, in order to uh, detect uh, multi-user activities, you can use multiple devices, for example. You can use uh, audio, you can use video, for example, or you could use um, IoT devices, or just wearable sensors. In our research, we just use wearable sensors in order, again, to be able to detect and recognize group activity, where group activity, you know, means many things. You, you, can, you can have sequential activities, you can have interleaving activities, you can have a concurrent, parallel, or collaborative activities. So the idea is, let's try to use wearable sensors in order to detect such kind of very difficult group activities. And again, uh, you can uh, 
um, perform a hybrid approach uh, using uh, multiple devices, or you can just be uh, more focused on a, a specific approach, focused on just uh, uh, video cameras or on just IoT uh, devices or on just wearable sensors. So you can see some of, of such uh, sensors and devices in these slides, for example. But again, um, our idea was let's try to reuse Spine in order to uh, promote this uh, um, uh, detection of collaboration between the actors um, involved in these multiple um, multiple activities. Okay, so uh, in in, uh, in in this direction, uh, we proposed uh, the so-called collaborative body sensor networks. Uh, not only from the methodological perspective, but also from a real implementation that was based on ex on an extension of Spine that is able, you know, to 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 support, for example, if you consider a group of of of, of user, a group of people, is able to to understand uh, proximity detection between two two persons or multiple persons. Uh, is able, you know, to discover services provided by the different body sensor networks. And then uh, if there is a match between, uh, you know, the provided services, it is able also to activate new services and then uh, to establish um, not, not only new services in general, but specifically uh, multi-user recognition services. One of such services that we implemented, this is the uh, the, the, the collaborative architecture of Spine. Of course, uh, I will not go into details, but you know, in the paper I suggested you you can find more details about uh, you know this infrastructure. Using this uh, this infrastructure, we were able to create this application that is uh, the very first uh, application uh, allowing to detect a handshake between two people. Not only the handshake, but also possible reaction from the uh, heart uh, viewpoint, okay? So it, it's a kind of uh, emotional reaction to the handshake. So the system that is based on wearable sensors that you can uh, wear on, on your wrist uh, specifically are able to detect the handshake between two people and uh, during the handshake, the, the system is able also to detect possible uh, emotional reaction based on uh, ECG sensors, okay, and based on um, very straightforward multi-sensor fusion algorithm. Okay, now, uh, in the last 10 minutes, I will try, you know, to give you an outlook of, of, of what we are doing now in this uh, uh, Italian project that is uh, uh, specifically, uh, that was specifically conceived, uh, you know, to explore this uh, world of community-oriented wearable computing systems. In order to support uh, a community of users, not just single users or a few of them, we need to have uh, new requirements. We have to define new requirements, specifically targeting cooperative multiple users and uh, demanding for radically new approaches. So this is something that is important to mention that we, we need radically new approaches in order to be able to create this uh, community-oriented wearable computing system. Radically new approaches at a different level, not, not only at the high level, but also at the low level, at the device level. So from the device level to the network level, to the middleware level, to the application level, to the data level and cross-layering, okay? So we need to provide such new um, approaches. And, uh, um, you know, this was motivated uh, also by, you know, the, the, the pandemic years, okay, the pandemic year in which uh, we tried to develop uh, uh, tracing, contact tracing mobile applications. They, they all failed, okay, also in Italy, we, we developed and deployed um, an app named Immuni that, you know, the, the aim was, uh, you know, to trace uh, the, the contacts, but, uh, you know, uh, as you know, uh, the, the mobile phones are not, smartphones are not suitable for specific tasks. And also, you know, from the reliability viewpoint, the accuracy viewpoint, the results 
in uh, um, tracing contacts was uh, um, a big failure, like uh, in uh, many others uh, uh, trials all around the world. Uh, here I listed many of them uh, in Israel, in Taiwan, in South Korea, in Singapore, in India, in, in many other, uh, let's say, countries uh, of the world. Because uh, very likely, you know, smartphones are not the right platforms. So we need um, a platform that is more sensor oriented, more community oriented, in, in which uh, we, we, we would have not just smartphones, but also a set of sensors that are able uh, to, um, to provide uh, specific information, accurate information about the distance between people, about distance between a group of people, and so and so forth. Okay, so we need a, a, a radical new approach if we would like to build in the near future um, uh, applications, uh, distributed applications that could be able to support us in pandemic periods or anyway in other uh, applications, uh, domains in which, you know, the, the, the concept of community is, uh, is fundamental. Okay, okay. So this is, uh, you know, the, the architecture we designed and uh, we are developing in our uh, Commonwealth project. Uh, as you may see, uh, it's a full-fledged architecture. So we got the different layers uh, starting from the device layer to the network layer, to the middleware layer and to the service layer. Specifically, the network layer and the device layer uh, constitute a so-called wearable cyber physical social system. Uh, that, you know, the architecture is exemplified uh, at the bottom of this slide. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, in order to uh, make it work, uh, you need also uh, the middleware and the service layer uh, based on a new paradigm that are not uh, the usual ones uh, we exploit when we have to program uh, sensors. Usually, if we have to program sensors, we, we program them using low-level languages like, for example, C or C dialect, for example. In this approach, uh, we will need to exploit a paradigm that is not a conventional paradigm, but it's a paradigm that we call it uh, uh, collective opportunistic computing. Okay, So this paradigm allows us to create um, using a macro programming approach to create high level specification. And then this specification could be then turned into low level code. So we, we will not, uh, uh, you know, program at the low level anymore using this approach, but uh, we program at the, again, at the high level, at the macro programming level, and then uh, we would have some sort of translator that uh, are able, you know, to, to create uh, the code and uh, to deploy the code in, uh, in the real uh, sensor-based platform. So this is the idea of our, of our, of our project. Uh, it's already the, uh, we are already in the second year of the project with some results that we are publishing right now. So uh, very likely, you know, in, in, the, in the very near future, um, we will have uh, our paper published in order, you know, to exemplify the approach we are taking in, in, in our project. Of course, in order to exemplify the approach, we also are developing uh, applications, okay, important applications. So you can see different application uh, as uh, factory work, uh, human mobility, uh, pandemic management, and, and, and so on and so forth. One of such applications is also um, related to uh, create a collective virtual environment in operating rooms where you got, uh, you know, uh, doctors, you got the nurseries, you got the surgeons, and, and so on and so forth. They need to, uh, you know, coordinate with each other in an explicit and implicit way in order to perform better. So this is another application we are developing based on wearable uh, sensors in order to create this environment in which, you know, the, the, the surgery team, uh, the operating room team could be able, you know, to perform much better than uh right now than nowadays okay let's try to uh, summarize uh you know my talk so that i i leave space to to questions uh 
uh, first of all, you know, Spine um, was a, a reference framework in the area of body sensor networks with all its uh, variants, not just the plain Spine, but also the collaborative version of Spine, the body cloud supporting community of users, and many other variants of spine that allowed us to experiment with our our environment in in many different uh, use cases the new uh, requirements for community oriented body sensor networks allowed us to to push for a radically new approach that we call it again uh, community oriented web computing systems with many different motivating use cases first of all you know the pandemic management use case but also the surgery theater collective intelligence use case that uh, you know on, on which we already published several several papers so if you are interested please contact me so that i can give you uh, pointers uh, on on this direction and uh, um, an important uh, um, outcome uh, that um, we will provide uh, in a little while will be, uh, you know, the architecture, the infrastructure uh, based on uh, this uh, concept of wearable uh, social cyber physical system. Uh, okay, the, the pilots we are, we are developing uh, at the small scale, at the medium scale, at the large scale. And last but not least, I'd like to say that uh, in order to have uh, this radically new approach, we also need uh, to exploit systematic engineering methodology. So we cannot program by scratch such systems. So we need to have uh, methods in order to, to drive processes. We need to have uh, uh, formal methods in order to verify and other methods in order to simulate systems on a small, medium, and large scale. Uh, to conclude, uh, I'd like to promote my IEEE Press Wiley series. So if you are interested in submitting a proposal for a book, uh, this is, uh, again, a Human Machine Systems series. So again, if you are interested in submitting a book proposal, please let me know. And also, you know, um, we established this series uh, years ago, it's uh, 10 years ago, it was a subject, 2013. Now we uh, got more than 60 books in this series. So the series is Scopus Indexes, EI Combendex Indexed. So again, uh, if you got some ideas about an edited or autored book, please let me know, keep in touch with me, and uh, we will discuss uh, in order to have your book in, in my series, okay? Thank you very much for your attention.